you mentioned people conditioning at yeah. these jams. And this is something that I think you and I have talked about a little bit. Uh, let me introduce it with some things that I've seen, and then you can respond and tell me your take. So when parkour was relatively new, from my perspective in the United States, we were all trying to figure out how to do it and how to become really good at it. Yeah. And in my recollection, the leaders in proclaiming how to do it well and how to get better at it were, from my perspective in the United States, Parker Generations in England, and then Apex Movement and Ryan Ford here in the United States. And they had kind of this, I don't want to say a partnership, but they were very friendly Parker Generations were doing their rendezvous events where people would show up and train. Apex Movement and some of these American parkour guys kind of got on board and were they were championing they were championing the Yama, the Yamakaze cause and it caused a lot of fighting because I said no parkour's from David Bell and these guys were like no parkour was founded by nine people and I would say you guys are freaking crazy those guys are awful they're not they're like a shadow of David Bell it's founded by David and so there's all this fighting and like people trying to posture for positioning in yeah. the community like we trained with the founders and then like no you didn't it's like yes we did and blah 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 anyway all I have to say is that these groups that that you could say in some ways I'm not I'm not gonna say pioneered because I don't think their way stuck so they were kind of like this trail that failed in my opinion but this group that led the way I'm being I'm being pretty mean to them but I mean I'm also being honest like it, I think their way sucks, and I think that they uh, yeah. they uh, they tried something that didn't quite work, which is fine. I've done I've tried things that didn't work, but the point is this: they were very heavy on the physical training, yeah, like quadrupedal movement for a hundred yards, like tons of push ups, tons of pull ups, that type of thing. So, was this your experience in England in in the early days? And or how did that evolve and what were the factions, et cetera? Yeah, well, I think when I first started teaching and stuff, uh, uh -huh. I was very much um, conditioning, you know, because really, well, I come from a background where it's, um, it's, it's a very martial art background that I've got. And mm -hmm. it's, for example, you know, applying the principles of the Book of Five Rings by like Japanese sword fighting of the, I don't know, like the 1500s or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that, by the way. That's that, that is I've probably quite far off. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, these are, the, these are guys that before you could even pick up a sword, they would make you walk around the mat like hundreds of times. And mm. on, yeah, so it was that kind of like mentality to begin with, but. Um, for you, you had that mentality in the beginning. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the way that I like that I wanted to view. Okay. But uh, I, re I realized after a while that um, you lose students if you do that. Because like, you can't keep students. They'll never come back if it's not fun. So, yeah, you, you condition for like two-thirds of the class... And then mm. just so they can have a little bit of fun, it's just not quite enough, you know? Mm. And I think, yeah, I think for the first three or four years, I, I was a bit too hard on the conditioning side. It's very much um, a parkour gen kind of mm. more on that side of things. But I, I realized after a while that it was just, it's just yeah, it just didn't work. Um, mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I lost some work with the army, actually, teaching the army how to do parkour because I was too hard on them. Just completely knackered them out. And all they really wanted to do is just try and do some flips and stuff and just have a bit of fun. Because they're already doing all this physical stuff as part of their job. Like, why would they, why would they want to do more work <laughs> instead of fun? Um, yeah, so that's... That's a, that's a perspective I got to just, uh, yeah, after a few years, I think. You know, what's interesting is I would think that it was similar to me. So, you know, the reason I started parkour, long story short, and this isn't a comprehensive explanation, but I saw this guy named David Bell. I saw that he was super fit and super strong. I'd been a scrawny kid 
And I said, I want to be like that. <laughs> so for me, it wasn't a mindset of, oh, I want to jump around, although that was part of it for sure because it was cool. But I wanted the physical transformation. And so for me, parkour was about this really intense training method. Yeah. And when I started to do it with other people that found parkour through me or through viral videos instead of through David Bell's kind of videos, they seemed to have more of a fun approach. Yeah. And out of the fun approach came jams and community. And I never vibed with that group because for me, it didn't really make sense. It was like, I want to train really hard. And nobody else wanted to train really hard. And anyway, uh, maybe Urban Free Flow Volume 3 with Stefan Vigru. He talks about training like a thousand squats a day and he talks about all these things. And I took inspiration from that. Yeah. But that really wasn't the, the mainstream, I think, draw to yes. the sport. 